Uh, I've had a good week. Um, guys came out, uh, worked hard. That's uh, what we need to do. I, you know, they're gonna res they responded this week, came out like they have every week. Uh, working hard, getting ready for a, a number one team in the country. Got a great opportunity. Uh, and uh, our guys have come out and worked this week. Kurt, tell me all about South Dakota State's defense because I'm looking at them statistically and there's not mm -hmm. any obvious weaknesses at all. I mean, their run defense is top in the league. Yeah. Sacks, I believe, if not top in the league, then second. I mean, it's, it's, it's a very stout uh, challenge for the offense this weekend. Yeah, no question. It's the best D-line that we've seen all year. Maybe one of the best D-lines in the country. Um, they're very active. They don't stay blocked. Uh, they play with their hair on fire. Uh, but that's where it starts. Uh, they play a lot of guys at linebacker, play a lot of guys in the secondary. And the one thing about them is that they just all play, play very, very hard. You mentioned how they all play hard. They've really had to live with the next man up philosophy. Mm -hmm. They've had so many guys rotate in on the back end due to injuries. I mean, talk about how all the different guys that they have, but it really seems like, as Todd mentioned, there's, there's no dip in production or whoever they do put in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they do a great job. Do a great job defensively. Uh, you know, coach, coach does a great job. They've always played really well on defense. They're playing at a very high level right now. Coach, just kind of quickly going back to Illinois State, when you went back and rewatched the game, mm -hmm. was there anything specifically other than just your team that you felt really contributed to that slow start? No. You know, it, you know, obviously you're looking at things that you can do to improve, um, and you know, you you identify that. That was an obvious. Uh, we got to come out faster, and uh, we, we, we can't jump behind uh, 20 points and come back against a really, really good team. Uh, but I'll give this team, our, our team credit. Uh, uh, they got a lot of fight. They never quit. Um, you know, I've seen that, uh, you know, we get behind in the past and things didn't, didn't go that way. And, uh, but this team's different. This team uh, has got a lot of fight. Uh, care about one another, and they're going to continue to play hard. South Dakota State obviously has, you know, stakes involved. They're number one. They mm -hmm. want to maintain, try to get, you know, the overall number one in the playoffs. Um, you know, what what are the the stakes that you're putting out there for your own team? Sure. I mean, they've been obviously getting over the top is the biggest one, but uh, you know, what, what's what's their you know biggest motivation going? Mm -hmm. Well, I think. You know, obviously, we're looking for that first conference win against the number one team in the country, and uh, you know we've we've uh, approached it the same way uh, every week. Uh, we got great opponents each and every week. Uh, we've played the number one team in the country earlier, played the number team two team in, in the country earlier. That's not where they're at right now. Uh, this team is number one, and for and for right reason, they've earned that. Uh, so. Uh, I don't need to, you know, tell them that we're playing the number one team in the country. They know that. Um, but what they, they, what we've got to do is we got to continue to complement each other, play better offensively, defensively, collectively, and put put it all together. Coach <clears throat> Cade continues to make plays for you guys. Cade, okay, how has yeah. he kind of ha developed, and certainly needs to kick that up. Everyone does on offense this week and notch as well. But how has you, how have you seen Cade kind of grow and develop? For your, for your offense over these last couple of weeks through a brutal schedule? Yeah, well, experience. Can't put a price tag on experience. He's getting a lot of valuable experience right now. Um, he's taking full advantage of that. Um, but you see him getting better uh, each and every day, and he's just got to continue to do that as he progresses. Kurt, I was going to write about Giannini. Um, fellas there on the uh, defensive line. and. Oh, uh, okay. Tell me about, you know, that strikes me as a transfer that has worked out. I mean, he's yeah. been uh, pretty good in there in the middle. And, um, you know, tell me about what he's, uh, what kind of wrinkle he brings to the. Yep. To the you know, recruited Giannini uh, out of high school. Um, you know, sometimes it doesn't work out. Um, that one hurt, you know. Uh, when he, when he uh, decided not to uh, sign with Indiana State originally, um, because I thought he'd be a good fit. Not that he wouldn't be a, a good fit, but I knew he'd be a great fit, you know, here at Indiana State. And uh, that that one uh, that one hit below the belt. So I, I uh, uh, that one, uh, you know, and, and things happen full circle. Uh, you know, he came uh, available on the portal, and uh, you know, so obviously we jumped back. 
and got in front of him, and he uh, he's now a Sycamore. And since the day he's been here, um, he's fit right in. Kind of what we thought when we were recruiting him. He was a fit, and when he uh, joined us, uh, he's been a fit, and he feel, feels like he's been here the whole time. And uh, he's starting to develop himself into one of the leaders of this defense. Can you talk about his personality, too, and just what he's meant? I know that's why yeah. you said he would be a fit, but yep. just, a, just a great personality to have in your locker room. Well, he, you know, he comes from a great program. You know, I've known Coach Tipman for a long time. Kurt and I worked together back in the day. Um, he, we were both graduate assistants together. He's now the head coach at Fort Wayne Snyder. I know what type of program he runs. Um, and, uh, you know, with character and toughness, uh, we've got quite a few young men in this program that have done very well. It's a good fit. And, uh, of course, you know, Gene Eney is the ultimate team guy. You know, he takes guys underneath his wing, some of the old, younger guys, and uh, brings them along. Uh, he's always in the office watching film, uh, trying to get himself better. Another defensive guy who's been productive the last two weeks is Garrett Olendyke. Yes. Uh, what's, what's helped him uh, kind of emerge as, uh, you know, one of the leading tacklers on for the past couple of weeks? Yeah, well, you know, Garrett's got great length. You know, he's got long arms and he's got great length and he can run. Um, you know, he, again, as he's getting into the, into the system, another young man just gets better and better each week. Um, takes to coaching really well. Um, you know, he was a qualifier at a high school, came from a really, really small town in Iowa, um, was overlooked, was a four-point student coming out of high school. I uh, went to Iowa Central, was a four-point there, and uh, he was a great take. And uh, another young man that's joined our program and fits the culture and has done extremely well. <clears throat> I know you talked about Cade, but what, what's uh, it looks like Gavin is getting more into it yeah. uh, in practice. What's, what's his status, and uh, wh how does he kind of fit in things going forward? Well, all three quarterbacks are good to go. Um, this is the first time probably that Gavin has been. Um, it's probably another week, you know, he was probably just quite, not quite ready last week, um, but he's ready to go this week. Coach, looking at South Dakota State's offense, didn't see Gronowski a year ago. He was hurt. Oladokun was yeah. as electric, I think, as any quarterback in the league. Describe, though, the differences now with Gronowski in and maybe even some of the differences of when you go back and you watch him in the spring, which he led them all the way to the national title game. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, Mark's a great player. You know, I remember him out of high school. You know, he, uh, you know, from Nequa Valley, he's a great player. Um, and, uh, you know, had a great run. Took him to the championship game. He's a gutty guy. He can run the ball. He can throw the ball. Um, but he's, uh, he's going to be as good as there is in the country. Uh, he's already up there right now. But uh, uh, he makes them go. You know, they're, they got great, great skill. Got great running backs. They're they're really really good up front, and they got the best tight ends in the country. And uh, um, they're they're very very effective offensively. And he's the guy that makes it go. You mentioned Kraft. He's back. Uh, how big of a difference does he make really for their offense and and his skill level? Obviously, a guy at the NFL has yeah. a lot of eyes on. Yeah, yeah, It'd probably be the first tight end taken. Um, he's awfully good. He's awfully good. Uh, I've watched him for it seems like for a long time, and uh, uh, but him and Hines are really good, you know, and uh, they complement each other really well. Uh, but they both are big targets that can really run and block. Uh, you know, when you when you look at uh, uh, you know a well-rounded tight end, it's a guy that can block in and beat you, flexed out, and uh, you know Kraft can do that. You know, they can flex him out, they can bring him in. He can he can do about everything for him. Finally, my last question for you, Coach, is for them offensively, coordinator left, got a head coaching mm -hmm. opportunity. Are they really doing anything different offensively, or is it really kind of the same scheme that you did see a year ago outside, just different personnel? Well, there's some similarities, certainly. Um, you know, Coach Eck brought his flavor to it, you know. Um, you know, a new offensive coordinator has, got, has brought him, but, you know, you're seeing a lot of the same baseline stuff. Um, but at the end of the day, they're very effective. You know, they haven't they haven't they haven't missed a beat. Uh, they're they're awfully good with Coach Eck, and they're awfully good now.